Today we're going to be talking about the two FDA approved medications used to help treat hair loss. Stay tuned. What's up guys? My name is Edwin and I'm a pharmacist and I enjoy making these videos answering common questions patients have about medications or any healthcare related topic. So that you subscribe for more content. Now to the rest of the video. Hair loss is more commonly seen in men than it is women, but women also do experience some sort of form of hair loss throughout their lives. But the type of hair loss that we're going to be talking about in this video is hair loss due to genetics. So there are other types that are due to like environmental factors or trauma, but genetic hair loss is the most um, prevalent and it's also the most uh, permanent type of hair loss. So there are two medications that are FDA approved that are shown to help either help manage your hair loss or maybe even regrow some hair that's lost. The two medications are minoxidil, also known as Rogaine, as well as finasteride 1 milligram, also known as Propecia. Um, in my previous video, we talked about finasteride 5 milligrams, which is used for BPH. So in, in that video, um, I kind of mentioned a little bit about how it could be used for hair loss. But the way both of these medications were discovered was uh, hair growth was a side effect of these medications. So originally, minoxidil was uh, used for a high blood pressure medication. And throughout the study, they saw some hair growth in the patients in the, in the study they did. And because of that, they're like, hey, let's try to make this medication to a topical formulation and let's put it on patients' uh, heads and see if uh, their hair will grow. So the way minoxidil works is that typically it will enlarge the capillaries so have more blood flow going. So you have, if you're balding and you have uh, more blood flow going, so there's more nutrients feeding your hair follicles, it promotes uh, hair growth or also prevents hair loss. So that's one medication that they've used, and I've actually I brought it here. This is something we sell here at the pharmacy. This is generic minoxidil. Um, Rogaine is also available both for females and for males. For males, they typically recommend 5%, um, the concentration of the, of the medication. Females, they typically give 2%. Men can use the 2% as well. Um, this medication is really popular because, one, you don't need a prescription for this medication. Um, and you, it's topical, so you just apply it to the area, so whether it's on your ver on your vertex or the corners of your hairline. Um, it does um, work in the sense that it, it's better for prevention of hair loss that I've seen in patients and also in the studies. However, there has been hair growth with this medication. Because um, the studies, they showed that you could reactivate the hair follicles that could um, regrow. Because the way genetic balding works is that you typically have miniaturization, so you're hair follicle kind of, uh, the circle kind of gets smaller and smaller and eventually like closes so you don't have any hair growth. Um, minoxidil, you typically use it twice a day. The problem with this and also for finasteride is once you stop using the medication, the hair loss will continue and it'll go to the, where it was, where it was, was supposed to be before you were taking the medication. Um, using it twice a day can be a little cumbersome um, but um, it is practical and it's, it's good as a topical so you have less systemic or like um, overall uh, side effects in your body. Whereas finasteride is, uh, which is also known as Propecia, that medication works as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Basically it's lowering the amount of DHT in your body and DHT is a major culprit in hair loss. And what it says, what they theorize is that DHT kind of suffocates the hair follicles and eventually killing off the hair follicle because they're sensitive to DHT. The stock bottle, so I don't open the stock bottles, um, or else I'll show you guys the tablets, but finasteride one milligram, they basically found that in the uh, ProScar finasteride five milligram studies that patients were also experiencing hair growth. So what they did is like, oh, let's cut the tablet into a fifth, let's, and let's give it to patients and rebrand it as a hair growth medication. So finasteride one milligram Propecia. So they did that. This medication does seem more effective um, than the minoxidil. A lot of patients use it together. I, um, a lot of patients use it as a combo. The problem with finasteride, it has more of more serious uh, side effects than minoxidil. For example, decreased libido is a big um, side effect for finasteride. And the problem with that is some uh, studies show low incidence of decreased libido. However, like the, I, in my opinion, there's a problem with reporting on that. So some patients are not, might not be aware of that. They might be um, maybe embarrassed to say that, so they don't report it. And so in the studies and the statistics, it doesn't show as much decreased libido. 
but it does work you usually take it once one time a day and this one is pretty effective in regrowing hair as well as uh, mainly preventing hair loss so with hair loss the key thing is to prevent to start it as soon as possible because it's easier to prevent your hair from falling than to regrow hair so these are two medications that typically um, are used for hair loss I know there's a lot of su uh, supplements like saw palmetto um, and some I think uh, some other like jellies or uh, coconut oil have been theorized but those those studies aren't that solid salt palmetto did have one study if I remember correctly that showed I think six, six out of ten patients had some hair growth with it and it was a placebo controlled trial um, I have to look into that one but this video I'm going to want to talk about the two FDA approved medications for hair loss um, in terms of side effects the minoxidil one it will be better in terms of less severe side effects you might get some face swelling you might get some itchy scalp because it is a foam it comes in both a foam and a droplet solution the foam is typically easier to administer um, but it does get a little messy so they recommend doing maybe 30 minutes before you go to sleep and then before you head out in the morning if you go to work or school or anywhere um, but yeah so um, these are the two medications that i want to talk about if you guys have any questions, comments, or uh, feedback you guys have for me, I know I haven't posted them in a while, um, and I want to know uh, if you like this kind of free formatted uh, explanation that I do. So this explanation is just basically off the top of my head. Um, my other videos, I make it more structured, where I have segments. Um, that seems a little more concise. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but this one I think is a little bit more natural flowing, a little more, um, might be a little more uh, quirks in the video, but um, I should give, I'm giving this a try. So I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.